So, Eleonora, it is an honor to have you here. Um, you're a person that I look up to a lot and I, I've been following for, for some time now, uh, at, least, at least a couple of months. So I, I, I'm very familiar with all your, all your content and I'm a fan of it. So welcome to Know What. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be connected. And um, yeah, I have to say it's been, uh, it's been really nice being in contact so far and I'm looking forward to sharing more today. Perfect. So uh, just, just, just for the audience to know, we are both Italians, but we're going to talk in English. <laughs> yes, we can do it. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. And it's going to be a struggle, but yeah. That, that is. So the first thing I want to ask you it is actually uh, one thing that I discovered doing a little bit of, of research, and it is the project Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more? It, it is back in 2007, right? So it, it, it is some time ago, but I want to know a little bit more of that because it is so uncommon. And I, I, mm -hmm. so can, can you share some experience about that? Yeah. Okay. Wow. You are, you're opening up something about my background that is like not the early days, but the early, early, early <laughs> days of my life. Uh, and actually, what I can say in short, Progetto Rwanda was a project started in Rome. And it's when I was at the beginning of university and for a summer, I decided to go to Rwanda and, and support a local project there at a, an, in, an institution that supported women, uh, especially women that were the only um, workers in their family. So this project was about bringing sustainability to their whole family and to the whole community through the work of women, empowering them to learn um, a, a practical skill from uh, sewing, cooking, uh, microcredit and things like that. But the funny thing about this project actually is that I started getting involved in it when I was in high school because the municipality of Rome back in the days, uh, so in 2004, 2005, they supported a, um, they were funding a school. So every year, all the high schools in Rome, they were getting together and funding a new school in Africa. So during my last year of high school, the, this project, this finally this school opening was in Rwanda. And because so many schools were involved in that, they selected four people from each high school to be part of the inauguration ceremony. And in 2005, I was one of the four people from my high school uh, selected from my high school of a thousand people uh, to go to Rwanda for, for that. So I consider this has been one of the luckiest events of my life. And, um, and I consider it a true manifestation because I was praying for it. I was deciding this thing so much. And I remember me at the start of my high school thinking, if I'm selected for this, I'll make sure that I will pay it back. So um, I continued for, for two years, actually, to support this project. Progetto Rwanda is an onlus um, in Rome, still existing. So in 2007 was my second time, actually, in Rwanda after that promise that I made to, to myself. All right. And, and, and that, 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 is, that is cooler than I expected, but I <laughs> expected something like that. But you said something interesting and, and just, just to dig it, it's manifestation, right? Mm -hmm. well, what, do, what do you, what do you what mean? What do I that? mean? Well, at the time, it just felt a very strange coincidence that I really, really wanted this thing so bad. And um, it felt like talking to the universe, please make me like, let me do this. And um, I'll promise that I will contribute to the world. Uh, and I didn't know anything about what I wanted to do in life back then. I just, I felt called. Um, and Africa was calling me because my grandma, actually, she grew up in Somalia during the Second World War. Uh, and that's why I was, I was always curious about the African territory. So that time was for me um, a big discovery, the first time in Africa. So it was a great experience. And, and manifestation, now it's something that uh, as a word, um, especially in in personal growth or in personal development, it's more common to, to hear about it when you consciously desire something and then it happens and it has sort of a spiritual meaning to it. Uh, so that, that was that, that episode for me in my life, even though I was totally clueless uh, what's happening here. But yeah, it was a beautiful coincidence back then. And it did change my life because after that, I decided to study international relations because I wanted to um, 
well, my early purpose in life was I want to save the world. I want to work for the international corporations or for the UN uh, projects like these. Uh, so that was my earliest um, career goal, let's say. Then life took me in a very different direction after that. Is it a different direction or still, still kind of the same? Well, I still have those things within me, but the direction is very different because after that experience in, in Africa, and I did fundraising uh, activities for at least two more years, so at least until 2009. But in the meantime, I joined an organization also in university that is called ISEC. And, and this opened so many other doors for me because I was still studying international relations, but um, ISEC, what it means is... Um, it's an association of students originally from business that want to create more international opportunities in form of exchange uh, across the globe. So it was a bit more business focused, economics focused, uh, more um, project management. And I was very fascinated about this um, these opportunity to grow. So I still had my background and my interest in international relations, but I started working in all these projects with a lot of people studying business. So I started getting closer to corporate um, organizations, to um, a different way of operating. So along the way, I found out that I still cared about that purpose, but at the same time, it was not for me to work for a bureaucratic organization or for a large, um, yeah, uh, what would you call uh, UN or like, yeah, this government organization. So I thought that I, it would be better for me in terms of environment to work in a place that was more innovative and fast growing, fast moving. So, um, so that's why in Rather Isaac, I started, yeah, I started practicing recruitment, um, marketing strategies, working with uh, corporate clients. And this is what I decided to do after university. So left behind my studies and, and went for things that I actually liked, even though I wasn't sure I had the background for it, but I learned along the way. Cool. And I see the, the, the unifying um, theme uh, between all those things. That it seems like you really want to help others and mm -hmm. it seems so genuine. And, um, and so... Just one question about Africa because it's, I'm so interested about that. It is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do, do, you, do you remember if that was a life changing trip, 100%. a life changing project? And what was the life changing 100%. thing that, that you discovered? What, what, what was it? What, what did you discover? What, why your mind shifted radically from that experience? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, what shifted it well first of all i was 18 back then and it was the first time ever to be in a complete different continent um and and to experience life uh, in in a complete different way so already that opening up to other cultures um a different way of living and and of course uh, we went to a rural area of the country so it was a very simple village and and the first lesson that I got from this experience was think how lucky you are for all the things that you have in life. And, um, and but remember also the meaning of simple things. So, so that was a big lesson for me. And the other one that I already had it in me, but, but definitely that experience brought to life, if life even more is the, the notion that we're all the same thing in the world. I truly believe that no matter the religion, no matter the nationality, the race, etc., we're all human beings in this planet. So of course we we might feel like we have things that we are that makes us different, but ultimately we have much more in common than, than what we have different. So this is something that stayed with me and uh, and still is. Cool. And it might go a little bit too woo woo now. But it, are you talking about the idea that we are the same consciousness and living like it is the same consciousness living through different experience? Or is that idea? That is, that is the step forward, I think. At the time, what I felt for me is I have the same desires, I have the same challenges and struggles that than a teenager in Africa or in any part of the world. So as simple as that, at the time that was my, 
like wake up call. It's like, oh, I have uh, maybe a different, like uh, here we are with our mobiles and uh, like all the technology and all the means in the world. And here I am in a, in a country where it feels life is more simple, but I'm not better than anyone. And, um, and at the time it was more this humanity connection. And then, yeah, I, I, I right now this, this thought that I had back then, of course, 15 years later, it has evolved into thinking, okay, there's so much more that connects us. Are we part of the same, um, consciousness or, um, or, or like the more spiritual level? Yeah, I completely believe that. And there's so much about the history of humanity that, that suge- suggests that actually, um, one of my yeah. favorite article and resources out there in case you want to look it up is about the human colossus uh, and feeling that yes it, that we are not just individual beings but at the same time we are like cells of a of a bigger body and that humanity is the is the bigger body that is evolving through through the ages so 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 wh- why do we make a fuss about our differences and uh, and spend so much time about war and conflict this growing up is something that it was always very hard for me to accept so yeah i can say that i have a diplomatic <laughs> um characteristic still with with me um and and that's part of my purpose no matter what i do i love it okay and, and please, please can you sh- can you share with me later the, the article you you mentioned yeah, yeah, so yeah, i can definitely. i can share in the notes and if for people interested and mm-hmm. and um, but we might not want to go that uh, even if we, we 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 could and uh, so c- can you can you walk me through your experience you said you you started with international management and you went uh, you were in rome yeah. and um, and then you started working for isec italy right that i recently joined after having you talked <laughs> about oh it. really i didn't know yes. that yes uh, uh, we can we can talk about it later Good. but uh, and so you you uh you started working with isec and can, can you walk me through your career yeah. you know and your background uh, so what, sure. what was after that yeah uh, one step in between the other thing that i think we both have in common is the interest of international experiences so even before joining isec um the summer right after going to Rwanda the second time, I did study in France for six months. So as soon as I could, I, I went for an Erasmus exchange in Europe. And, and that has been my, so my second year university, I did that. Then I came back and I was so depressed. Oh my God, it was so, so nice being surrounded by international people. Now I'm back in Rome. What do I do? And here I am one day finding this flyer of this organization. Oh, international exchange, come and help us uh, bring it to life. And I was like, hmm, okay, I guess I can have a more international dimension even if I'm staying in my city. So I went for the presentation and fell in love with the organization. So I stayed in ISEC for four years until I finished my master's degree. And uh, the Isaac works, you know, it's the most democratic organization on the planet. Every single... Sorry to stop um, you. Sorry to stop you one sec, just to make a clarification of that. You were studying and joining ISEC at the same time was like an internship? No, or? it's a, it's an association. So you decide to, if you want to be a member uh, and participate in the internal projects that usually do two type of experiences that you do in ISEC. One is you work in the association and you organize the projects. And the second experience you can have is decide to go for an exchange. So for an internship somewhere in the world. The only rule in Isaac is that you cannot do the internship in your country. So you have to go somewhere else. And because I already did the experience in Rwanda, in in France, I wanted to, instead of going abroad again, I decided to stay in Rome and help these projects, help organize these exchange opportunities. And, um, and what I was mentioning about Isaac being such a democratic organization is that imagine that Isaac right now, I, they must have hundreds of thousand members across the world in, in more than 120 countries, at least when I was part of it. So it was, it's a massive organization and it's completely run by students, 100% run by students, no other professionals. So everybody is 
either studying or deciding to take a break from university or just finishing university, but is everybody below 30 years old. And it's, hmm. it's run because at the same time, it creates these projects, but creates leadership opportunities. So it is organized in different levels. So there's a local level where I join in Rome, there's a um, national level, and there's an international level. So in the international uh, committee right now is based in Canada. It was based in the Netherlands until a couple of years ago. So hmm. Uh, I, I just started and every year, every um, opportunity and every role that you have usually lasts for, for a year. So you decide to apply, there's an election, people in your committee or in your chapter vote for, for all these leadership roles. And then this is how you can progress in the, um, in the organization. So I had one year when I first started up as a project manager, and then I applied for leadership roles and, and kept growing in the organization. So I was first responsible in, in my university for the project, for the uh, exchange projects. And then the year after I became president of the whole committee in my university, and then I moved at national level. So I was responsible for the whole Italian uh, association for these exchanges so yeah four years later uh, there I was every year I was traveling to many different countries for conferences I facilitated a conference in Japan um, I participated in yeah many different countries in India in Kenya um, Estonia um, Turkey and and it, it was like being part of the UN but imagine all made of uh, 25 or, uh, years old, uh, more or less, people. And it was one of the great. most exciting periods in my life. Great, great. No, and, and what happened after that? Why did you leave? It seems like a part. Well, well because I, I finished my studies, so I was... I, I knew very well the, the people at the international uh, committee and I thought, mm, do I want to do that or apply for, well, start working? So I decided to, to start my professional career. And at the time it was difficult because my studies were telling me, oh, maybe you should apply for the UN, for the European Union. That's what I always wanted to do. But what about the innovation, fast growing side of my preferences? So I, in, during the years in ISEC, I practiced a lot of interviews, recruitment. Uh, and, and what I found out that I really loved was helping talent grow and see the, the potential in people and seeing the people like from starting uh, one experience, six months, one year, transforming, finding their own purpose and, and unleashing their personal happiness. And I thought, hmm, I want to keep doing that for, for others. So that's why I decided to continue working in this field. And um, first of the first thing I did when I was looking for a job, I started looking in the Isaac network because Isaac has an amazing list of corporate partners. And, uh, and at the time, Nike uh, was one of the European partners and um, they just opened an internship. And, and the, it was probably the week I was graduating that a friend of mine called me and said, hey, we, we're opening this new opportunity in, uh, in Nike. She was a friend from Isaac. And she was working there and uh, asked me if I was interested in considering this internship. And I thought, hmm, Netherlands, I didn't think about that, but sure, let's, let's have an interview and, uh, and tell me more. And after the interview, my eyes were like, this is so exciting. And, um, and then I, I went for the internship. So um, I moved to Amsterdam. So, okay. And that was the Nike chapter of life. Yeah, that was the Nike chapter. So I started as an intern. That was that's how they called me, the intern, recruiting the interns, <laughs> and uh, yeah, th that was it. So I joined the talent acquisition team for for Europe in uh, in Nike in the European quarter, and I was very lucky because it, I was in a team of about twenty people, um, very professional. All of them had great recruitment experience, so I learned a lot during my first year. Uh, and um, and I was responsible not just to recruit the new interns to join Nike, but also to start shaping a program because at the time it was only internships in different moments of the year and with um, 
with uh, with my director at the time, we started shaping it into a program, thinking, oh, should we like have people studying in special moment of the year, how their onboarding experience looks like, and uh, how can we identify the most talented interns so they can stay in Nike afterwards. So during my whole year, that's what I've done for, for others. And when I was about to finish my internship, um, my team offered me to stay. So um, I, I was hired and I continued working in Nike for, for five plus more years. All right, and that that is so interesting because, as you know, the, the the audience that I have are students, and I am myself a student about to graduate. So, can you tell me more about that? What was that you were searching for in the early career talents in mm -hmm. in at Nike? That that is a that is a very structured corporate, but it is all, also a, a very creative company. So, what what is it? Well, how it, how does it look like? What is it? What do you search for? And what is the experience like? Right. And this is what I'm saying. It comes from my experience, right? Sure. In, in no way is the official policy of the company or any way the preferences might vary between companies. At the time, um, the most important thing was looking for potential because if it's an internship, it wasn't just looking at the skills, but it is also show me how fast you can learn. That was one thing. And, um, and the other thing is how much do you care about the, the business and the company that you're going to be part of? So what I always appreciated is from, from every candidate is under, like seeing that they have made some research. And, uh, and you know, like I've heard it a lot from candidates. Uh, oh, but you, like all companies are just sending an automated rejection. There is no, um, there is no feeling that there is an interest. I'm treated like I'm not worthy at all. And imagine that the company feels the same way when they receive a standard CV. The company like, or, or the, the recruiter feels like, okay, this person is applying probably to 20, 30 other companies sending the same CV and cover letter. They're not making any effort to be different. So that's, that's where a lot of the mismatch sometimes is happening. So the biggest advice that I always gave was, okay, make a research, first of all, and understand if that's something that you, that you love or not. So, so that, that, connection between the mission and the interest should absolutely be there and what i loved about recruitment in nike that it was not just about what you do in your professional life but we always encourage people put your personal interest uh, your hobbies uh, what you bring to the table what makes you unique and of course being a sports company if people love sports either because they used to play sports or because they were um, a fan of of any of the sport of the athlete Put it there, mention it. You're going to love the job even more. Great. And you said something that, that is very uh, interesting, but I find it so uh, difficult to, to, um, to conceptualize. And mm -hmm. you said you hire for potential. But how, how did you see, what was your thought, uh, your thought process in identifying potential? It is not easy maybe to identify potential in one interview, right? So what, yep. how, what, what do you suggest to early uh, career candidates in order to showcase their potential? How do you showcase your potential? Yeah, right. That's a, that's a great question. One is um, give an example of things that you've learned. So some of the questions, for example, I might ask is, give me an example of something that you had to learn from scratch by yourself. Or when's the last time you, you learned something new? So um, and that, that means that what makes you different, what shows potential is not just following what other people tell you to do, but you showing your initiative, being proactive, uh, showing curiosity. So when, when is it that you go above and beyond um, that compared to what you're asked to do? So these are all elements that, that for me show, show potential. So um, um, one thing, even if um, a lot of times people already had done internships or even in university, it's so common right now to do project work. And I think that that's, that is such a great, 
example. So even those things, don't underestimate them. If you've done uh, summer, like work in the summer or um, any type of internship, helping your family, helping a friend, starting a podcast, uh, starting your own YouTube channel, like anything, like what have you done out of your own interest and initiative and give an example. Great. And, and can you, can you, do you remember, and do you feel comfortable when you're sharing, do you remember any particular interview that said, or maybe a particular interview and you said that candidate, yeah, hired. You don't need, need more. Do you remember any, the, the best me. interview you had? Um, no, I don't think I remember one specific interview, but I remember applications very much. For example, there were a few um, uh, intern candidates that have submitted videos so they created a video about their own day to show how much sport was part of their day or how much Nike was part of their day. So, so that is one great example. And um, other things, it could be... Um, Do you remember oh, one video? Can you, can you, can you, can you tell me, can, can you tell me an example of, of that video? If you remember some? No, I don't, I don't have the link. I don't remember the person, but it was like that, like showing the, the daily lifestyle and, and showing how Nike was already part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And, and what sports they loved and, uh, and, and why they were applying to that specific internship and what had they done at school. So it was very, very tailored, very, very unique and customized. So it made me feel, oh, okay, this person, I can see them fitting here because they are already thinking like they're, they're here. Uh, that could also be a manifestation technique, by the way, if you want really something to happen, think that you're already there. How would you be a, what would you say from that place? Uh, so that was mm -hmm. very, very useful. Um, another interview example I remember is, um, is a guy showing a, a very creative solution, like, uh, like solution thinking and creative thinking. So even not apply to a specific job, but say, Hey, once I had this challenge and, and I did this to, to solve it and it was like, wow, this is so creative. Then it means that this person can truly learn and, and solve any type of solution. So that's already a very good skill to have. Great. So go above and beyond and then try, try to, to showcase your potential right, right up front. Did, did you remember, do you remember it like having um, links or direct videos or, or, um, no, no, not right now. Usually we're internal. They were sent directly to, to the company. So, so no. Uh, but Perfect. if you want to have some examples, so the company that I'm now working uh, for, Mind Valley, uh, mm. it has a very specific practice since, uh, since the, the early days. And uh, this, this is um, asking for candidates for a video cover letter. So um, it, it is a um, and like, in some of the position, it is a mandatory thing to submit. And I know that it creates a lot of uh, anxiety or, or worry in, in others thinking, oh, do I have to submit a video? I have to prepare something complicated. The point is, it's not about the editing skill. The point is show who you are. And, uh, and that has been a great element that, that built the culture for, for Mind Valley. So I had to do it as well when I applied, even though I was a senior. Mm -hmm. All right, and and so you you gave me the perfect outcome to talk about Mind Valley now. And <laughs> can, can, so after Nike, you joined Mind Valley, right? Correct. Can you can you tell yeah. me about that that particular phase of your life? Why did you choose to leave? Why did you join Mind Valley, and what convinced you? Because it is a, it is quite a, a difference. You, you yeah, I still one. have friends and family that have said. So, so why again did you leave uh, Nike? You loved it. It was such a great company. And then you moved to Malaysia. How did you even find this company from 70,000 people company to 300 people company? And um, it, it's a couple of reasons. So obviously like Nike was really a great chapter for me and I'm still friend with so many people still really care about the organization and the brand. I'm still so loyal and but and, and I've worked in in different areas by the way so I work mostly in recruitment but also in talent management talent development 
then in like in the six years I've been there, the internship program became so much bigger. Uh, so it was really a matter of pride to see what I've created and, um, and the contribution that I could give. And I knew that the team was in a really good place. I, I developed the team after. So uh, I knew that there were people that could take care of it. My push, like, you know, when sometimes in life you feel like a, something that is knocking on your shoulder or is like pushing you a little bit. And, and I felt uh, that that was for me, there was something that told me, it's like, there's, there's a world out there. Why don't you go and explore it? And, and Asia was the, the part of the world that was calling me at the time. So it was beginning of 2018. And I really, like my, one of my best friends had moved to Asia. And I thought, well, if she moved, I can move as well. And, and I started my research, what country, and of course, um, I did speak with Nike um, and there might have been an opportunity as well, but uh, at the time it wasn't clear. And when I started looking around or I put a new intention, I really see myself in Asia. Then another friend of mine called me from Isaac, by the way, uh, I, I hear again, the network that helped. And this friend of mine was working in Mind Valley, and he had left Apple to join Mind Valley. So I thought, okay, I'm not crazy here. <laughs> and um, I'm not the only, and I'm not the only one. And he had grown so fast in Mind Valley. He started as a customer support specialist, and he was growing his career in marketing. And I, I really admire him for for a lot of reasons. And he got me really curious about what Mind Valley was doing. Especially remember what I told before about liking the fast pace, innovative environment. And and at the time, I wanted to be more in a that company because I think that that's also where the future is going working in um, in a technology environment so I thought okay my valley feels like it has a lot of um, uh, a lot of characteristics that I that I'm attracted to and I think this can offer a complete different experience so I didn't see myself leaving Nike for a similar company or or just being in a corporate that didn't have a lot of differences I thought if I change it has to be, it has to give me some different skills. And so different continent, uh, different industry, personal growth, e-learning, uh, much more technology. And even though it was on paper a step back because I had my team in Nike and, and in, in Mind Valley, I was, uh, I was a senior recruiter focused on tech. I didn't have a team anymore at the time, but I thought if that's the fast growing organization that I think it is, it's not going to be a problem. I'm going to have the opportunity to grow. It doesn't matter the job title. So I know that it is very hard for people to take this leap of faith. Uh, and especially for me, I had to convince my husband uh, to, to come with me and follow me. But it was as much as sad as, as I was to move to Asia. So, um, so then there you go. We decided to move. And now Mind Valley. And so it, what, was it a good decision? Was it a bad decision two years after? Best decision of my life. Can you tell me why? This time it was for sure professionally, I grew a lot, but in the last two years, I like personally, I, I changed even more. So it did offer me um, much more um, challenge. And, and what I felt that, uh, especially, I don't know if it was, like it probably my attitude and what I was expecting um, after so many years working in the same organization, I was used to attaching my identity to that company, to that, to that work, to that team. And, and, and having this big shift also pushed me to think, who am I? What is that I like? What else can I do outside of my work? And I did, st I did have a, a food blog, by the way, on a side. And this is a passion project of mine that I huh. started in 2017. Yeah. But there was something more. And, and I was feeling when I, when, I, when I moved here, okay, let me find out what is my true purpose. Let me get back in touch with um, my, um, yeah, my initial career intention. So I went through a personal like growth journey uh, it, much more inward than, than outward to um, to dig deeper in myself what are my key values I really wanted to answer 
the, the question, what is my purpose in life? What is the contribution that I can give? And yeah, it took me countless of hours of reflection, books that I read, programs that I've attended to, but, um, but I'm, I'm so much more fulfilled right now. So that's why it was worth it. So there is a, there is a, a big um, black ink in my notes here that, that I'm taking, this says purpose, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So can, can, you, can you tell me more about that? What is it? Why are you a huge advocate of purpose? And why is it so important to, to find it, right? Can, can you tell me more? Well, for me, it came from my own interest. So for me, I just felt the need. So I need to know my why. That was my, my reason. And, and it did you know that me. a Nike or what was it a, a yeah, very recent? Yeah. No, I was always curious, but I think I was, I got some answers at the beginning of my career and I thought, Hey, I love it here. I don't need to question it. And then when I moved, there was a feeling of, especially, um, now I use this question a lot in my coaching. Think if there's somebody or something that you really envy that you are jealous about, chances are that this is a clue for you to understand what, why and what you, that maybe you want to be like that person. And, and for me, I was very jealous and, and curious about people that uh, other entrepreneurs or global nomads, people that had a lot of freedom uh, in their day or people that are very self-expressive. So it was a push for me to say, okay, it means that I have a lot of ideas and I need to let that out, but how do I let it out? So, so that was one of the, my really personal need. And that's why I said, it's like a nudge. It's like a, for me, it's a physical, um, a physical symptom sometimes, like something that is pushing me to, to act. And it became so clear. Um, it was one year ago when I had a big shift because during my whole career, right? I always I mean, it's been 10 years now that I do interviews. I help students prepare for interviews. I look at CVs and I advise people how they to do their CV. So nothing new there. Uh, but one year ago, I was invited to do um, another training in this sense. And I was training different universities in Europe to prepare their students for, uh, for the final phase of their studies and to land the job of their dreams. And, and I was preparing this training and as I said, nothing new in the concept and the why, but then I stopped myself and, and, realized, and, and, and connected a couple of dots that right now in the world, I don't know if you heard this study from Gallup, it's from a couple of years ago, that it, there's an estimate that between 70 and 85% of people are completely disengaged from their work. So I asked myself, like, are we just training students or early career talent to nail the interview, to get the job, even if they won't be happy in the job. Why don't we help people to find the job that they're truly passionate about instead of just worrying, will they get the job or not? So this is where my whole mindset shifted. And, and I thought, okay, I know this is it for me. I want to help people um, aligning who they are to what they do. And in that sense, this is my profound belief. Career is not just a job that you choose once and, and then you sign a deal that you cannot live anymore. Careers are simply one part of our life when, where we become who we are, that help us grow, that, that's it. Um, so instead of having this anxiety or um, this pressure i have to get it right i cannot change it anymore who said that especially nowadays people change career or change um what they do every few years and it's fine it's fun so instead of worrying about oh stability stability or happiness no why do we have to choose between that mm -hmm. right then can you can you expand on that I thought I was already speaking a lot. So I thought maybe I should take a no, break. Oh, no, no, <laughs> you can go. You can go all day long. What, what part of it? Like, what is that? Um, per, 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 what is your, the, you said, um, especially about the purpose and how did you find your purpose specifically? So you, we, can, we can translate it for, 
for us as well, right? What was your, your process? How did you get over there? You, I know it's a very long process, but do you have some practical tips and tricks that people can follow? Right. Before going on to the process, I would make a disclaimer to start. Two disclaimer. One, um, it doesn't mean that every single person has only one purpose. So again, no need to think, oh my God, I have to treasure hunt. Uh, if I don't find the one thing, it's not going to work. Not at all. We might have more than one. And for sure, it can evolve in different phases of life. So that is one thing that I would clarify uh, first. And, um, and the other thing is purpose. It is a lot about understanding who you are. So it doesn't have to be something that you find outside, but is more something that you find within. This, this has been my experience. So if you ask me, it has to be a long journey. You can think so because it's a lifelong journey. Uh, but at the same time, you can also think, okay, what is relevant for me right now? Or what is relevant for me that I do next? So it doesn't have to be um, something that, that necessarily requires a lot of time or like, uh, yeah, never ending effort. It's, it's good enough to say, hey, let me understand what's most relevant for me. So for me, it took me about a year and a half to have the answer that I was really, really happy with. But I also accepted it at the beginning. It's going to evolve. It doesn't have to be perfect. So it was such a personal lesson to get rid of my perfectionism and thinking. And this is something that I learned from Mind Bali. One of the things that I appreciate the most, I learned from Vision directly, thinking of 80% perfect. Don't obsess to achieve 100%, but think, okay, what is one version that I can launch, test, nice keep draft. and yeah, what is the draft? Let it go, release it, test it, and then you can always refine it. So I started doing that with my career, with my purpose as well. So it was a couple of things. It was people that I talked with, books that I read, and, um, and courses that I did. So it was a mix of these things. And and things changed when I got a very strong support group. So colleagues in Mind Valley and, and friends that I that I got outside, really, especially because we are um, we have similar interests, so we supported each other, and um, that's that's how I got my answers. Great. And so, can you can you tell me about the books and the, <laughs> and the courses? <laughs> Can you tell me what, what, what are those and a couple of resources that you, you might want to give out? I know, obviously, like what you said before is so true and, and um, it's not to me to say, but it, it, you have different purposes and you have one big purpose that is a long time purpose and then you have different part of your life that you need to fulfill with whatever right. you, need, you need at that moment. So, what, can, can, and, and that is uh, very true even for me in this moment. So, what, can you tell me about the resources? So what yeah, what yeah, books yeah. would you recommend for that? What courses did you take and the, and the, and the friends? Uh, I can, how do you how to find them? Of course, I can recommend some starting points um, because then I think it's a customized journey. So you start from somewhere and then you will take us all in different sure. direction. No? Uh, so one, um, one of the starting point, for example, was the book Ikigai. Uh-huh, nice. Yeah. So that is one of the um, most popular book. I have to say that I, I liked it. It sparked some interest, but for me, I was looking for something deeper. It's like, okay, got it, but what about the, the deeper thing? So I read the books recommended by Igigai after that. <laughs> and one of the books that changed, um, like that still touches me more to this day is uh, Man in Search of a Meaning from Viktor Frankl. And it's one of the book that is, um, that is recommended in, uh, in the Ikigai book. And this, um, yeah, it, it's, it, just thinking about it, it really touches me. And together with that one, there's another book that is by one of the disciples of Mark, Fr um, Viktor Frankl, sorry. And the book is called The Choice. Mm. And, um, and this is from a um, female psychologist, um, Dr. Eger. Finally. Choice. Finally, some diversity. Huh? Finally, some female as well. I, I, yes. 
Absolutely, okay. no, a lot of female. Um, and uh, so this has been a lot about my introspection and um, both of them have a psychology background. So in this specific part of psychology that is really about um, making your own choices in life and, um, and finding meaning even in, in challenging times. So it was a really um, powerful reflection. Then another side of um, programs came from one is a program from, from, from Mind Valley that is called Lifebook. So I've done that course and I got, and it's a life book. It is a program. It is a, a quest, how we, we call it, where you get to explore your life and get clarity about what you want in 12 categories of life. And those categories are health and fitness, intellectual, emotional life, character, um, social life, love, relationship, financial, career, and so on. So um, is a lot of um, a lot of that um, different angles of life, and this is the time when I moved to Malaysia when I started thinking, what is that I really want, and and how can I improve my life? And it turns out that my financial life was an area of my life that I completely neglected, and I started really more about that too. So I um, I decided when one of the book is um, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind from uh, tr hacker talks about it so this is where i started challenging a lot of my beliefs and um in changing my mindset about wealth uh power and um and, and confidence a, a lot so um, this has this has given me a lot of those elements and um, and then another author that i really love is uh, simon sinek so both his books, Start With Why and Find Your Why, is, is absolutely one of my um, inspiration. Well, great. And, uh, and uh, I probably had like 2,000 follow-up questions. <laughs> I don't, we, we don't want to go over three hours, right? So yeah, I, uh, I got I to gotta say to you that, that this was a wonderful conversation and and uh, we might want to have a part two because really I have a couple of questions that I wanted to go into. But do you have any any um, any final suggestions for? Uh, I, I I told you in the email, right? Like as a as a big sister, do we have something to say to to our, to, to somebody that is graduating and is looking for a very big step on their life and that is entering a different kind of world? Yeah, um, the, from me, it is, first of all, listen to, listen inside and focus inside to understand what makes you unique. So what, what are the clues in your life that tells you what, what is really meaningful to you and what is the cause that you want to um, that you want to support and you want to contribute to so my advice is to not just think what is the job that i should do but um i got this from um uh an an author that that we partner with in mind valley and one of her question that she's she reframed that question what job do do I want to do to uh, what is the problem that I want to solve in the world? And, and I remember myself telling it to my first boss. He thought it was crazy probably at the time. He didn't tell me, but he looked at me and said, what do you mean? I told him, look, you're asking me what job do I want to do in the future, but I'm pretty sure that the job that I want to do doesn't exist yet. And it's fine for me. I can tell you what I like to do next, but who knows how the world will be in, in five, 10 years. So even right now, why stressing about a job title? It's really what are the problems you need to solve? What are the things that you love to do? And, 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 and I truly believe that you can find a way to make it work. Even though, of course, it's not an easy path. Um, but if you listen to your own rules and the things that you cared about, and always in respect of others, I said, my value number one is unity, right? And, and, and humanity in general. So always in respect of others, but 
if that is present, then you can do whatever you want. All right. And I think this is the perfect note to close it down and to close down season one. And, uh, and so thank you, Lenora, for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. And, uh, and of course, um, I, I find it as an Italian, I find it hard sometimes to keep uh, answers or, or messages short. There's so much more that I would like to talk about, but either through my posts, what I do in Mind Valley or um, Human Careers, which is my coaching uh, website, then uh, I'm happy to, to share more. Well, uh, I will leave all the links, obviously, of uh, you, you, you got to send me a couple of links we talked about, and I'm going to tell you what. And, uh, and, um, and we will leave all the links of, of your LinkedIn profile, of, your, of everything you're doing right now, even the career service, the career coaching you're having right now. And it is, that, that is great. So uh, I truly think you are a wonderful resource uh, for all, all things this matter. So I truly, I, I deeply recommend you. Forever. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriele. I, I'm, I am generally open to connect. So um, I invite everybody not to be shy. I don't feel, um, don't feel that there is distance or anything. One thing that I learned, if I can add, working in personal growth or in the personal development industry now for a few years is that every single one of us has something to learn and we are all of, in a journey to become who we are. So don't ever think that somebody else has all the answers and you don't we are all on our journey so don't don't feel the barrier and reach out thank you